This is one of my favorite books on gouache. How to Paint Landscapes Quickly and Beautifully in Watercolor and Gouache by Nathan Fawkes. I got a lot of good ideas from this book. For one, I, I like to combine watercolor and gouache, and he had a really good idea for a setup for painting outside. He eliminates the tripod and he just paints by sitting in one of these chairs and he puts the paints on his lap with a sketchbook. There are a bunch of demos in here and he really emphasizes simplifying the scene because you don't have much time when you're painting outside and the light changes so quickly. He used to work at the DreamWorks Animation Studio and these are paintings he did from the view of his window at work. This is a really good book, I'm still reading it. If you're into gouache and watercolor, I definitely recommend picking it up. The Art of Gouache by Jeremy Ford. What I like about this book is he has different styles of painting and gouache. So the poster style has flat areas of color with harder edges. And then he introduces the illustrative style, which is more painterly. Of course, he covers all the tools and materials you'll need to get started in painting a gouache. He shows two different ways to blend colors together with gouache. There is wet blending where both colors are wet, and then dry blending is that you blend into an area that's already been dried. And there's a section at the end about painting portraits. Overall, I think this is a really good book, especially if you're just getting started with gouache and you're trying to find your style. Color Harmony in Your Paintings by Margaret Kessler. This is a really good book for creating color schemes in your paintings. In the beginning, she covers the basics of color theory and provides a few color formulas for useful colors. She also has 10 tips for color mixing. And then she goes on to talk about choosing a color scheme and what different colors can mean. I like how she shows the reference photograph next to her painting. So you can see how she altered the colors. In this example, she used a combination of primary colors to create this painting of a boat. She also uses a secondary color scheme made of green, orange, and violet, as shown here in this painting. You get a sense for how much inventing your own colors can impact the painting. Look how warm this painting is compared to the original reference photograph. Here's another example. This beach scene is much more inviting once you add warm colors to it. If you're interested in creating your own color schemes, then I highly recommend picking up this book. Imaginative Realism by James Gurney. So like every other James Gurney book, this is packed with lots of information. He covers a lot of the equipment that he uses, including the drawing and painting media. I feel like the meat of the book though is how to paint something from your imagination. It's hard to do that, so what he does is he creates maquettes and tableaus of the subject he wants to paint. So for example, this is a dinosaur that he sculpted along with this imagined city. And that's the reference material for this painting. This is a clever technique where he takes a 2D drawing of something and turns it into a 3D maquette. So this is a sketch of a dinosaur from a scientist. He photocopied it, taped some wire to it, and then he can position the wings however he wants to. That way you can get an idea of the lighting. And here's the painting that he made from that little model. He also uses maquettes to create creatures such as the one you see on the cover of this book. This book will definitely help you if you do any sort of painting from your imagination. The Simple Secret to Better Painting by Greg Albert. So what is this secret? Never make any two intervals the same. This might sound too simplistic, but it's incredibly useful. This is a good example. A landscape that has an even division between the land and the sky is pretty boring. Now compare that to these simple compositions where the land is dominant or the sky is dominant. So here's a fully rendered painting that demonstrates that concept. You notice that the land takes up most of the space and then the sky has a smaller strip at the top. That's much more interesting than having the horizon line dead center. Here's a problem you see with trees where it's just like a big soccer ball. There's nothing interesting about that. Whereas these trees are much more interesting, especially when you have these openings between the foliage. This principle also applies to color and he refers to it as mostly, some, and a bit. You can see that at play in this painting where it's mostly blue with some less saturated blue and a bit of warm color for contrast. The principles in this book can be applied to a variety of painting styles and other visual fields. I highly recommend it. Vibrant Acrylics by Hashem Akib. Here are some of his paintings. This is a good book for learning how to paint with acrylics in a loose and bold style. He uses acrylics in his paintings because they dry quickly and he can work through a painting in one session. Wide brushes are good for creating bold strokes rather than going after the details with a lot of tiny little brushes. Here's a list of all the different pigments that he uses. Notice how much paint is on his palette. He doesn't skimp on the paint at all. He always begins a painting with a tone canvas. These are some of the colors that he recommends and he goes pretty bold with these colors as you can see. For example, here's a painting with a green toned canvas and this is the finished painting. You can see little bits of green showing through. And here's a landscape where he begins with purple. 
and there's the finished painting. There's a variety of demos and exercises that you can do in this book. This is one where you paint a rose. I recommend this book for artists who are looking to loosen up with their acrylic painting and to paint in bolder colors. The Acrylic Painter's Book of Styles and Techniques. This is one of my favorite acrylic painting books, and that's because it shows the versatility of this medium. The book covers seven different artists and how they use acrylics, and their styles vary widely. William Hook is one of my favorite artists in this book. He paints these really nice landscape paintings. So lots of tips in here about how he uses photographs for references and how he paints quickly. Barbara Buer uses fluid acrylics like watercolors to paint photorealistic paintings. She applies thin layers of acrylics in a transparent watercolor manner. Louise Cadillac uses acrylics to paint abstract paintings that contain a lot of textures. In this painting, she used corrugated cardboard, an eraser block, and alcohol to create different textures. Michael Nevin paints in thin layers of glazes. So he starts with a pencil drawing and then he builds it up by applying thin layers of acrylics. And there's the finished painting. There's some other paintings in this book. You can use acrylics to paint flat areas of color to create landscapes like this. And here's some landscape paintings from Joseph Orr, who used to work at a greeting card company. This is a good book when you're looking for inspiration. Pick it up and see what you think. The watercolor course you've always wanted by Leslie Franz. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of detailed demos in here and what I like is that she includes the reference photographs. So for example, there's a photograph of a landscape and then she shows you how to break it down into shapes. So there's the tree shape, sky shape, and then the shape of the field. You can see faint pencil lines and then she does like a graded wash over the top of that. Then she adds the tree shapes and adds the color of the field. I thought that was interesting because she painted the color of the path first and then painted the negative shape, which is the grass around it. There's some tips on how to see shapes one is you can blur the photograph to get rid of a lot of the detail. And another way is to turn it upside down because you don't recognize the objects as much, you just see them as shapes. And then she demonstrates how she turns it into a painting. I like how she includes a lot of demos in this book and she goes into detail about her thought process. Painting Light and Shadow in Watercolor by William Lawrence. What really attracted me to this book is it's mostly about how to simplify what you see. And he has a number of ways of doing that. But the main technique here is what he talks about in this paragraph, where you squint your eyes and see only two shapes. Shape one is everything that is in sunlight. Shape two is everything that's in shadow. That way you have simplified numerous objects into two shapes. That's the thing with watercolor is if you define like the shadow shape and filled in with colors, it's much more interesting than painting each individual shape. So you can see the shadows of this house. There's like orange and blue, a little bit of red. That's not there in person, but it makes for a painting with much more color in it. Here's the final painting. If you're into watercolor painting, I think you'll find this book useful, especially if you have trouble simplifying your subjects. This is Coastal Landscapes by Ray Balkwell. What attracted me to this book is his mixed media approach to watercolor. He limits himself to two to three hours per painting, and this is especially important when you're working outside and the lighting changes quickly. He has a section on painting skies and water. I like this effect right here where there's soft edges, but then he leaves some broken bits for the white paper shows through. Another tip for painting clouds is not to use pure white, but to add some color to it. He's got sections on the different mediums and the techniques. So there's a section on watercolor techniques where he covers painting wet in the wet, dry brushing, and even using masking fluid. There's a little bit on pastel techniques, gouache techniques, and oil painting techniques. Here are some demonstrations. It shows the first stage, and here's the second stage, third stage, and this is the finished painting. This is a good book if you like drawing and painting outside, especially for artists that like exploring in different mediums like I do. 